welcome to uh, class 11 of uh, the on topics in power electronics and distributed generation. In the last class we were talking about uh, grounding of distribution systems and we looked at the need and the possible methods for grounding of uh, distribution systems. And uh, in terms of the grounding of sources, you can have an ungrounded source or a delta uh, type of source, in which case uh, in terms of the actual implementation, a IT type of uh, uh, secondary distribution grounding grounded network is similar to what would be uh, for this type of uh, system. Uh, the source is ungrounded, but the loads uh, frames is connected to ground. Uh, then you can have a solid grounded uh, system, uh, in which case the source uh, neutral is connected solid to ground uh, and the uh, ground point which is the neutral is now distributed to loads and uh, the T n network is a uh, example of such a secondary distribution network ground grounding situation. The third scenario that we were talking about is a impedance uh, uh, grounded source. So, we are talking about uh, having a impedance now connected between the neutral of the transformer on the y side and the, uh, the earth, the earthing terminal and the, uh, it can be a resistance or a reactance and you can have the possibility of high impedance or a low impedance grounding. And we uh, in the saw in the last class an example of uh, uh, a small value of reactance which is connected uh, between the neutral and the ground. And we saw that in such a situation when you have a, a single line to ground fault, then your uh, phase voltages is somewhere now in between that of a solidly grounded system and an ungrounded uh, system. Uh, in terms of the fault current level, it is uh, uh, the current magnitude is high uh, may be sufficient to trip a uh, instantaneous uh, time over current characteristic, but, uh, uh, but uh, it is not so high that it might cause uh, very severe arcs uh, at the point of fault. And uh, these issues are important from the single line to ground fault perspective, because the majority of faults are actually occurring on a line line to ground basis okay so now we'll look at a case of uh, uh, a high impedance to ground fault and uh, uh, we we are looking at a case where a uh, uh, large value of uh, resistance is now added between say uh, the neutral and the ground and the objective in this particular case would be uh, to keep your fault current level uh, quite small. So, you are talking about a uh, high resistance grounding. low uh, uh, say we say something like say 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 per unit range. So, uh, of the order of 10 percent uh, typical current uh, value is uh, uh, less than 10 amps typically and uh, but it cannot be extremely tiny either. We saw that if uh, ungrounded system if you have no physical path to ground, you 
would excite the parasitic capacitances of the line and so typically you would keep the current through the resistor to be greater than I ti 3 times the I uh, capacitive current, capacitive charging current through for that particular uh, distribution network. So, so that you get adequate damping for uh, possible uh, oscillations between your uh, physical inductances of your components and the parasitic capacitance. So, in this particular case uh, because the current level is so low your single line to ground fault uh, can continue for a, a long time after the fault inception. So, your uh, So, instead of waiting uh, for uh, unanticipated point at which you would need to come in and do the repairs, you could maybe come in at night when everything is shut down, then go in and do the repair and uh, clear the point at which you are having the line to ground fault. Okay. And your resistance is sufficient to damp parasitic capacitance. And what we saw was you can have arcing at the point of fault and the arc the current through the arc need not be symmetric in the positive and negative half cycle. So, there is always a possibility of level shifting of your uh, distribution feeder uh, in case you are having an arcing fault. And now your resistance provides a DC path to ground to discharge possible level shifting. So, Uh, however, in this particular case what uh, you would see is that uh, uh, the after you have the fault the unfaulted phase would see uh, the conductors would see voltage uh, line to line voltage on a conductor to ground basis. So, your uh, uh, insulation and your O voltage protection and its coordination need to consider the fact that you would have sustained uh, line to line voltage uh, possibly occurring on the on a line to ground basis. Okay. So, if you look at uh, the IT type of distribution network that we discussed earlier, it is uh, quite close to what uh, the high resistance grounding situation is uh, going to be in terms of its characteristics. So, uh, uh, so you can actually look at uh, uh, that as a case where that value of the resistance is made uh, to be uh, really high just to look at your parasitic capacit uh, capacitance. Uh, to prevent uh, 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 oscillations of your uh, parasitic capacitance with uh, 
with your in your distribution network okay so you can think about the it distribution secondary distribution network as a example of this particular situation so we'll look at uh, example of uh, high resistance grounding so we'll uh, look at an example where you have a source and say this is delta y and the y is connected through a resistance of uh, say phi per unit and you have a circuit breaker and say the impedance x l of the transformer is say 5 percent and you have a, a single line to ground fault occurring somewhere down the distribution line. So, if you look at uh, uh, what would be the corresponding fault current in this case, uh, you can draw the sequence network to analyze the fault current. So, you have your source with 1 per unit voltage your negative sequence network is just the impedance j 0 0.05 and your zero sequence network is just the uh, is a combination of the reactants plus three times the uh, grounding uh, uh, impedance uh, resistance which is 15. So, if you uh, calculate uh, the fault current your I f is now equal to 1 by so your fault current is uh, is about point uh, if by 3 so your if is about point 2 per unit uh, so you can see that uh, with a point 2 per unit current you will not uh, trip a circuit breaker uh, because your load current itself might be uh, 1 per unit. So, your uh, over current trip will not function. Okay. So, if S 1 is a circuit breaker you can see that uh, S 1 will not trip And if you look at what the voltages are, the voltage V A, V B, V C uh, would be similar to what we calculated in the ungrounded case. Uh, and so, one way in which then you could uh, uh, sense that a fault has happened is by looking at your voltages. So, if you see that your voltages on one phase has come down to 0 and the other phase voltage has gone uh, 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 the uh, other phase has gone to line to line voltage uh, with respect to ground then it means that there is a single line to ground fault somewhere on the system then the question is where is that particular fault that is another question but you know that there is a fault when you see the uh, shift in voltage okay you could calculate uh, so You can calculate the power dissipation in the resistor because after you have a fault potentially the resistor will stay connected in the circuit for a longer duration till the, uh, the planned uh, scheduled maintenance comes in. So, you are talking in this particular case of about uh, 
0.2 divided by uh, 3 about uh, 7 percent power is getting dissipated till your uh, fault gets cleared in the uh, grounding resistor. Okay. Uh, there are other uh, ways of doing uh, uh, people have also looked at uh, possibility of having uh, high inductance grounding though it is not uh, very common uh, because you need to damp your your uh, LC oscillations and you for damping you need a resistance. People have also uh, looked at uh, something called resonant grounding where you have uh, a inductor with your parasitic capacitance tuned so that it is resonant at 50 hertz. So, in that particular case uh, you are you might have some advantage that in a resonant circuit uh, your uh, parallel resonant circuit your current drawn from the source is in phase with your uh, your voltage because and the current is drawn only into your loss in the branch that contain losses. So, you have in phase uh, voltage and current and having in phase voltage and current means your voltage 0 crossing and current 0 crossing is uh, occurring uh, close to each other. So, you have a possibility of self extinguishing the arcs in the fault okay, because when the current goes to 0 even the voltage is 0. So, your uh, arc might go away in your insulator, but it means that you have very good control of your parasitic capacitance which is not necessarily true people might switch in loads switch out loads. So, in a control situation you have such possibilities, but uh, not in general. So, if you look at uh, then the other possibility of uh, when you look at the grounding of uh, the source with the load you have the uh, the T T secondary distribution network where the first T corresponds to having a ground solid ground at your source and the second T corresponds to having uh, grounding solid grounded uh, electrodes at the loads. So, so what is shown over here is a example of a T T network the Y point is connected to power earth at the source the neutral is distributed uh, to all the loads. So, you have uh, three phase four wire distribution. Uh, potentially each load can have its own grounding electrode. So, in this example uh, we have shown uh, what we, have, we see is uh, load 1 and 2 has a common grounding electrode P E 2. Load 3 has another its own grounding electrode it might be uh, a big housing structure load 1 and load 2 load 3 must be might could be the next house. So, it could be uh, uh, you can have different possibilities of your T T grounding network. Okay. Uh, the one of the main thing to consider in such a uh, while analyzing such a system is that when you have a grounding electrode uh, inserted uh, uh, into the earth then you have actually the resistance earth resistance between your uh, earthing conductor and your physical uh, ground. Okay. So, you have uh, what is shown over here as a connection to earth physically is actually you might have a point you might have some uh, contact resistance to, uh, to the deep earth and then you have the physical deep earth which would be considered to be at 0 potential. And you look at your typical earthing resistance you it uh, is uh, a number which can vary uh, common values range from 4 ohms to 10 ohms. Uh, it depends on a variety of conditions like uh, uh, the how much wetness is there for the soil. Uh, the salinity of the soil, whether the conductor is highly corroded or it is a, a relatively uh, well maintained conductor. So, there can be a, a variation in the value of resistance, but uh, uh, these are some of the typical numbers that uh, people consider uh, for the grounding resistance. Uh, 
And if you look at the ground fault current in this particular case, so the first thing to consider is the earthing earth contact resistance. and that need not be uniform and uh, what you would see is that uh, the, the level of ground fault current is might be sufficient to create uh, to clear uh, uh, low rated uh, circuit breakers or circuit breakers of the order of 10 amps, but uh, not uh, high current circuit breakers. Okay. And when we say low voltage network, we are talking about voltage less than 1000 volts is what people traditionally call low voltage network. Um, and we will see this in an example, we will do an example to see that the fault current level may not be large enough in uh, all uh, situations. And you can actually also make your ground fault current. Uh, You can have a uh, ground fault current detection based protection, uh, which can be made sensitive. Say, for example, when you are having situations where uh, people might commonly use an electrical appliance and there is a concern of safety, you can have, say, areas like uh, kitchen, uh, bathrooms, etcetera, where the ground may be wet, there is a chance of increased shock. So, you can uh, try to set your ground fault detection current levels to be quite tight, so as to ensure that uh, people do not get uh, 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 severe uh, uh, say problem because of electric shock. Okay. So, we will look at an example uh, in of a TT distribution and uh, we, are, we are looking at say we will look at an example where say you have a uh, a 2 MVA source, 2 MVA transformer and say your leakage inductance is say 4 percent and uh, the secondary network is uh, 415 volts. And we will assume your resistance to earth is 5 ohms at each, each electrode. Okay. So, if you are looking at uh, 2 MVA 415 volt uh, network, you are talking about uh, I rated which is 2 MVA divided by 415 divided by root 3. So, you have about uh, uh, 2.8 kilo amps. So, uh, these are thick multi conductor uh, cables that might be connected in such a situation. And uh, we will look at an example where you have a uh, single line to ground fault in load 1. Okay. So, you have a fault in load 1 and 
you if you look at your uh, transformer reactants, the 4 percent reactants in this particular case corresponds to uh, uh, J uh, 7 uh, milli ohms, 7 into 10 to the power of minus 3 ohms uh, is the uh, reactance uh, of the transformer and then we could look at what is the resulting fault current in a situation such as this. Okay. So, we can draw the uh, sequence uh, network to figure out the fault current. So, you have your positive sequence network 415 by root 3 is the voltage, your reactance is J 7 into 10 to the power of minus 3. your 0 sequence is and then if you look at your source, on the source side you have the resistance between your grounding electrode and deep earth which is 5 ohms. So, that acts now as a effective grounding resistance of uh, 15 ohms in your 0 sequence network and then your fault has occurred on in load 1 and you also have now a electrode at load 1 which is uh, uh, also having a resistance of 5 ohms between the electrode and deep earth. So, that can be treated as uh, a resistance. So, you could th think of this point as P e 2 and this point as P e 1 and this point as your uh, deep earth or your, your physical maybe a 0 voltage point. Then you can look at then your fault current and I f by 3 is now 240 volts divided by uh, 15 plus 15 because uh, the 7 milli ohms is quite negligible compared to your 15 ohms. So, your fault current level is about 24 amps. So, you can clearly see that uh, 24 amps is a tiny percentage of uh, your 2800 amps rating of your main circuit. So, obviously, uh, you will not uh, see a, a overcurrent tripping at the of your main breaker which is uh, carrying your uh, uh, full current. Okay. You could actually calculate what your uh, uh, touch potential is uh, if say if a person is uh, uh, over here and the person say touches load 2. Uh, because you now have a, uh, a current flowing through power earth 2 and you have a resistance between your earth and your, your, uh, your there is a contact resistance, the frame, the frame of load 1 and load 2 will get elevated uh, when you have a single line to ground fault and you could calculate what that particular voltage is and if you look at the sequence network uh, that is essentially corresponding to the, the P e 2 point. So, touch potential at, at uh, load 1 So, with 120 volts you will definitely feel a shock if you actually touch a cabinet uh, at that particular uh, voltage level. Okay. Similar same thing at load 2. Okay. If you look at load L 3 
So, if you have a person now standing over here and touching load 3 with respect to power earth 3 the there is no current flowing into power earth 3. So, with that particular location the person will not get a shock. So, the all the loads connected parallelly which has its own independent earth you do not see elevated per, uh, uh, touch potential, but within the particular uh, uh, load it may be a, sing, a house or something like that you would see elevated touch potentials. Okay. So, uh, so we so you have seen the situation where you have some old aged wiring in a house, and suddenly you go and touch a different equipment, you might get a shock, uh, because uh, with in that particular uh, establishment you might have now elevated touch potentials for your equipment. So it's important to ensure that your quality of your wiring, etc., is good. Otherwise, you end up. Uh, having problems of uh, possible shocks when you are uh, touching equipment within uh, uh, a common ground uh, a, a load which has its common ground through which the current is uh, uh, actually flowing in. Uh, and you can see that uh, just uh, uh, over current fault might be sufficient to clear maybe 24 amps may be sufficient to clear a, a, a 10 amps circuit breaker, but definitely it will not clear a, uh, a 30 amp circuit breaker, it will not clear a 100 amp circuit breaker. So, uh, in a situation where you are having high uh, rated loads, you cannot just depend on over current to give you protection, you would need uh, uh, protection from ground uh, fault uh, current detection. Uh, and if you have something like 24 amps flowing through a circuit, which is designed to carry maybe uh, 20 amps or 30 amps. It means that your conductors would get hot. Uh, so, there is actually a potential for uh, eventually having electrical fires. Okay. So, you, so, you have to ensure that uh, the fault gets cleared or continuous uh, over current that is flowing through the network can actually lead to po uh, possible fires and that is something that uh, one would need to avoid. Okay. Also, if you if uh, there may be some bad practices where instead of uh, putting an actual fuse, someone might have just a physical conductor a strand of copper being used as a fuse. And in such situations, you go and touch the fuse, the fuse block will be very hot, because it is carrying a high current, but not sufficient to actually uh, uh, interrupt the circuit. And, uh, and things are running hot, because there is a fault somewhere in the system, which you cannot identify. But uh, for small facilities, I mean for small establishment homes, etcetera, where your loads are uh, typically 10 amps or less, uh, this would be a, a TT network would be low cost, because the number of conductors that are need to be passed around is quite small and uh, it is adequate for protection of uh, smaller uh, establishments. So, at this point with this uh, background on, uh, on what uh, can happen, what type of uh, possibilities are there in distribution systems and uh, uh, what can happen due to uh, uh, say poor grounding or uh, uh, the issues in, uh, that are there when you have a common type of uh, faults we can actually then look at the situation as of uh, what would happen when you add a distributed generator source into such a network which has its own grounding characteristic. So, we looked at again the IT grounding that is a type of grounding mechanism where you might ha have high priority for uh, uh, continuity of service. So, in a, a situation where you place greater priority for continuity of service you might put a, a IT type of network. Uh, whereas, if you are uh, very, you feel that uh, it is okay to interrupt the loads, but your fire is, uh, fire protection is something which is extremely 
important, then you need to ensure that you have high current levels to ensure uh, clearing of fault. So, a TN type of network will ensure that there is high fault current and it would clear the breakers in a short time frame. So, you do not have possibility of uh, long lingering over currents. Uh, and TT network is a balance, uh, uh, you do not have the situation where one fault will cause elevated touch potential at multiple loads, uh, especially when they have independent grounding uh, options and it is also sufficient when your uh, establishment is drawing lower levels of current. In case it is drawing higher current levels of current, you could look at additional options of actually measuring the ground fault uh, current level and actually tripping your uh, breakers. So, we will look at now an example where uh, you have a distribution network and we will look at the same distribution network that uh, we studied when we looked at the issue of coordination where we had some initial fault current levels that uh, the system was carrying and then we added the DG and we wa wanted to see what would happen to the fault current level. So, we will look at the same network where uh, uh, you had the traditional the old network which is say solidly grounded and then you want to add a DG uh, to this uh, setup and uh, you want to see well, what, what are the possible situations. So, when you have a fault and the fault that we would consider is say a fault F1. Uh, just close to circuit breaker 1. So, to analyze uh, this uh, fault situation, we will assume that the single line to ground solid fault is occurring at F 1. So, to analyze this particular situation, we will now again have to draw the sequence networks. So, you have this uh, the situation where you now have the possibility, the possibility of the contribution uh, of from your main source which is a grid and also now the DG. So, your positive sequence network would consist of so J uh, this reactance corresponds to the source uh, reactance okay. and then you have the DG which is also 1 per unit voltage and you have the reactance of the DG plus the interconnection J point 1 and the feeder reactance which we took as J point O 3. So, this is your positive sequence network. If you look at your 0 sequence, uh, your negative sequence network, And if you look at your 0 sequence network, on the source side you have now a solid grounded network. On your DG side, you now see the delta side of the transformer which means that it is open. So, if you look at the example, uh, so the 0 sequence corresponding to uh, this uh, transformer would be an open circuit because it is delta on the on the on the this high voltage side whereas here you have uh, a possible path for 0 sequence current. Okay. 
So, you could then calculate what uh, what the the fault current would be. So, we will uh, I will give you the numbers your I f old what I mean by I f old is the uh, the fault current when there was no d g. So, assuming that uh, this particular branch was not there and this particular branch was not there you would be able to calculate I f old. So, that was uh, 71.4 per unit for a single line to ground fault a solid single line to ground fault and I f nu is uh, the fault current that you have when the d g is connected. So, that corresponds to this particular figure which is drawn over here and that was that is 76.4 per unit. So, so if you look at this particular situation uh, you see a increased uh, fault current level uh, uh, at the point of fault and you can have your breakers operating in response to the fault because you have a solid uh, grounding over here you will see a higher current over here uh, which might say uh, trip circuit breaker 1. Okay. So, we look at a situation that can potentially arise uh, if the current uh, the way it branches out because the impedance upstream is quite small compared to the impedance back towards the DG. If the, the current is such that it trips say circuit breaker 1 before circuit breaker 3 then you will end up with now a new situation where then the new sequence network would be And your zero sequence in this new scenario is essentially a, uh, a open circuit. So, your I f your fault current level is actually 0. So, as soon as your circuit breaker 1 opens your uh, fault will uh, fault current would uh, go away which means that uh, now uh, you will potentially energize the feeder. Uh, uh, from the DG side and there is uh, no fault current. So, if the D DG is capable of uh, support supplying your power uh, uh, real power to the feeder corresponding to the level of demand of the feeder then you can continue in that situation for a really long time. Okay. So, the situation over here is uh, is say your C B 1 opened and uh, C B 3 is still closed. It means that even though you have a, a single line to ground fault you will not actually uh, have any fault current because uh, your, your, your system has now become a delta, delta ungrounded system. Originally it was a Y grounded system when circuit breaker 1 opened it has now become a uh, a delta uh, delta type of source which means that if c b if your d g over here is capable of supporting the loads on this particular uh, feeder it will continue to operate for a long duration of time okay so if uh, this is actually uh, can lead to uh, 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 many uh, problems and uh, 
you say for example, you, because you are originally solid grounding your source, you might assume that you are not going to have uh, phase to ground voltage of uh, that is going to be large, but now because you are having a delta uh, connected source, it means that now your, uh, your conductor to ground voltage can potentially go to uh, root 3 times what is the, no, uh, uh, the nominal. So, it will you will see higher uh, over voltage okay. and uh, systems are not designed to actually experience over voltage of uh, uh, 70 percent etcetera. So, you can have damage to uh, components. the DC can support the power requirement and maintain the voltage, it will continue to energize the feeder and original system is solid grounded whereas, after tripping There is a possibility of over voltage, and uh, so what it means is that uh, your DG circuit breaker has to trip as soon as your upstream breaker trips, and the upstream breaker might trip for reason other than for fault. For some reason, if uh, the breaker is opened, uh, say uh, CB1 is opened, then now what you have is the possibility of the grounding of the system changing from one strategy to another strategy. It is okay to have one particular strategy, but it is difficult to have systems which are changing the grounding strategy being changed uh, when uh, your uh, breakers open. Okay. So, so, again if you look at this particular uh, requirement, what it means is that for any reason in, in if uh, any fault happens in the system or if circuit breaker 1 opens, your DG has to be disconnected quite uh, rapidly which is similar to the conclusion that uh, we saw in the other uh, example when we looked at the protection coordination which means that you have to make your CB3 trip uh, potentially not just for uh, a fault condition, but also for, for any reason if CB1 opens you need to actually open CB3 or your grounding strategy would not be consistent. Okay. So, uh, now if you want to make CB3 that sensitive, it will become prone to a lot of nuisance trips. Uh, so, uh, so, being able to meet such a requirement is actually quite challenging. Okay. And the situation where CB1 opens and CB3 is closed is uh, what people refer to as a, a situation of an unintentional island. What you have done is you have uh, disconnected from the main grid and you are actually operating your balance of your feeder as an island uh, which is disconnected from your main grid. Okay. So, uh, this uh, unintentional island has many consequences, safety problems, liability problems etcetera. And, uh, uh, it is important then that your DG system is not just able to detect a fault, but actually now you need to generalize and be able to detect a situation where uh, your, uh, your system, your distribution system might potentially have an unintentional uh, 
islanding situation. Okay. And uh, what we will do is uh, in the next class we will discuss this islanding issue more closely because it is a imp important consideration for distributed generation sources. And uh, you have not just unintentional islands, you also have intentional islands. We will look at why people uh, do have intentional islands primarily from power quality perspective you may want to disconnect from the grid when the grid power quality is uh, poor. So, islanding is an important uh, consideration especially when uh, you are operating a distributed generation source and you can have different situations of islanding and we will discuss that in uh, the next class. Thank you. Thank you.